TV. Well, the crisis in West Asia, the conflict only seems to be expanding with multiple fronts now open as far as the war is concerned. It's been described as a seven front war. Beirut is certainly the center, the epicenter of the entire conflict with multiple Israeli strikes hitting Lebanon. In fact, people are now fleeing from Lebanon to, uh, towards Syria. So the border, uh, as far as uh, the border with Syria is concerned, uh, you know, it, it remains extremely sensitive. The Israeli border also remains extremely uh, sensitive. But look at those absolutely heartbreaking visuals. It's about the humanitarian cost of a war. These little children um, whose future now hangs in the balance. Uh, they're all moving towards Syria. Um, you know, there is no safe haven as far as West Asia is concerned anymore, given the fact that the conflict has expanded to so many parts of uh, the territory. In fact, look at those women, those children, all of them fleeing towards uh, Syria. So certainly a new crisis at hand as far as West Asia is concerned. Let's in fact first listen in to all the uh, reactions that have come in. In fact, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu has said that uh, Lebanon is now the new Gaza. Take a look. You have an opportunity that hasn't existed in decades. An opportunity to take care of the future of your children and grandchildren. You have an opportunity to save Lebanon before it falls into the abyss of a long war that will lead to destruction and suffering like we see in Gaza. Let me go straight across to my colleague Mohammed Ghazali. Ghazali, it's over to you. You've been reporting on the humanitarian crisis as far as Lebanon is concerned. Go ahead. See, uh, the, you just heard the Israeli Prime Minister, Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, issuing an appeal to the Lebanese people that we have to abandon Hezbollah, stop supporting them. And it is almost a reminder of what and how he addressed the people of Iran, how he addressed the people of uh, Gaza. And also, before uh, every attack on any region, Mr. Netanyahu goes on, appeals the people to escape or sort of leave that region. And then it starts the aerial attack on that particular region. This has been happening on the southern border or the southern suburb of, 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 of Lebanon because uh, Mr. Netanyahu had first said that perhaps people have to leave those positions, those villages. And first the prime minister announces it, then the IDF announces it in Arabic uh, to address the people in the region. And then it starts the attack. And this has been happening for the last one week. The situation in the southern suburb of Leban Lebanon is very dire. Because not only the ground engagement with the combat forces is happening on the southern suburbs, but aerial attacks have been also happening on areas which Israel claims is the stronghold of Hezbollah. But the civilian casualties have been very high in Lebanon for the last two and a half weeks since the Pager explosion was reported from this region. And now Israel is also claiming that its navy will get or enter into uh, Lebanon to uh, to occupy more territories because this today in one of the areas which is close to the Israeli-Lebanon border, which Israel claimed was perhaps a launch pad or kind of a, a, of a workstation for Hezbollah from where it used to launch rockets towards Israel, has been occupied by, uh, by the Israeli forces. They have a posted Israeli flag in that particular region. Many villages have been evacuated and not just near the border areas. Right now, I am here in Beirut, in the city center, and right behind me is the area called Dahiye. Dahiye is one area where uh, Israeli bombardments have been intense. Every day, almost, there have been bombardments in that particular region from where uh, and where the Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah was killed. Now, what has happened in the last 24 hours? The deputy chief of uh, Hezbollah issued a public statement yesterday addressing the people of Lebanon, saying that perhaps uh, Israel has not been able to dismantle its operations, Hezbollah's operations, and their power, their influence is still intact, and they are engaging in ground, ground combat with Israeli forces, and that is why uh, their influence have been so uh, enriching, perhaps, that Israel has been forced to choose the option of entering into Lebanon through the sea route, through their navy forces. But what we are expecting is that despite all the appeals of ceasefire, the U.S. has said that perhaps it has failed to achieve the ceasefire, and now they want Israel to dismantle Hezbollah and deplete its influence in Lebanon. So what we are expecting is that this war will continue to go on. And in the Israeli media, in the Israeli society, people are also rooting for it, asking Israel to destroy Hezbollah. But back in Lebanon, there are many people, and we reported yesterday from the Syria-Lebanon border, because families in Lebanon are now now, now uh, leaving Lebanon. They're migrating towards Syria. And it's almost a kind of history repeating itself for those people uh, who had migrated to Lebanon a decade ago from Syria when the civil war or the influence of ISIS and operations between Assad's forces and, and, and ISIS and Al-Qaeda had happened. These people had left Syria and come to Lebanon as refugees. And now, yet again, after the violence here, after the war has broken out, these people are le leaving Lebanon and moving towards Syria. 
Israel also destroyed the road which connects between Syria and Lebanon. And there are countless families. There have been intense displacement in the entire country. More than 3 lakh people is what the UNICEF and other humanitarian organizations have said.